from an international perspective, we are all very focused on what President Trump is going to say later on today, what he is going to uh, do in response to this attack on U.S. bases in Iraq. I wonder if you can give me your assessments of just what the implication will be for Iraq-Iran relations here, because there's been some talk that perhaps these latest events over the last week or so maybe bring them closer together, and it seems overnight that Iraq knew this attack was coming. Well, I think it's, I mean, it's, that's a very good point, and it's a really interesting thing. I think Iran had two options of how to retaliate for the um, killing of General Soleimani. One was either through its network, its partners in the region, be it Les Lebanese Hezbollah, Qatar Hezbollah, whatever, or by direct means. And it chose, and this is important, a direct conventional military response, which was launched from Iran against uh, or towards U.S. forces in Iraq, albeit those U.S. forces are, are based inside the security force bases of the constitutional forces of Iraq. In the one case at al-Assad, it's the Iraqi security forces. And up at um, um, in Erbil, it's the, it's the, it's the forces of the, uh, the Kurdistan regional uh, government. But then it's important that Iran was acting. It, it was demonstrating that it could act as a state against another state. Um, notwithstanding, mm. as I said, uh, the, the, uh, how that impacts on its relationship with Iraqi sovereignty. Um, because in the same and vein as, as uh, sorry. No, no, I was just going to, so you set out there very nicely the way that we saw this state on state action and perhaps that surprised some, uh, but, but that there, there was the backdrop for it perhaps. Now do we switch to a more proxy uh, violence situation then, Sir Tom? Is that what we expect next from the Iranians? A continuation, but but behind, a, behind a, 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 a door, if you like. I mean, I, th I think the, what Iran did, it, it took stock of the very senior level of the U.S. strike against General Soleimani last Friday. And over the period of the morning, it decided how it wanted to respond. The state-on-state -state response is about national pride and the ability to say, to present the case that it attacked uh, American assets in a way that was appropriate to the status of General Soleimani. Um, I think it's important to remember that what uh, Iran has always wanted since 1979 is to remove the United States from the Arab Gulf region or from the, the Arab world. It's short, that's its long-term goal. Its short-term goal right now, politically, is to, is to force the US out of Iraq. Um, so what it will it would hopefully be trying to do, or what it will be doing now, is trying to turn this calibrated response to the killing of General Soleimani into a political goal whereby it can continue to convince Iraqi decision makers that America ought to be uh, ought to leave Iraq. Sir Tom, wonderful to have you with us again. I want to go back to your leadership long ago and far away with the 1st Battalion Parachute Regiment of the United Kingdom with boots on the ground. Do we really have boots on the ground right now? Do we have a strategy and a tactical execution of American assets that is boots on the ground, or are we making it up as we go this morning? Um, I think... As a, as, a, as, a, as a research institute, uh, from a research institute, I think we would say that um, during the recent time of this administration, what, 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 a, what a state tries to do is it tries to deter its adversaries, to defend its interests and its allies' interests, and to conduct diplomacy to achieve its policy goals. The inconsistent approach, um, the, what appears to have been an inconsistent approach from the United States, has meant that Iran was not deterred that its allies were not defended, look at the attack against Aramco most recently, and that there was not an effective diplomatic line to Iran from the United States. The killing of General Soleimani, in a way, um, made brought deterrence back into the frame. But deterrence works best when, it's, when your position is consistent. Your, your, your opponent needs to know that if I do A, he is likely to do B. Therefore, I will either do it or I won't do it. Right. So what the United States probably has to do now is to get some consistency mm. back into its approach. Its policy and its strategy is something slightly different, but its approach to the Middle East needs to be more consistent. Right. If it's going to, so this, this crisis appears, as long as, God willing, um, no American uh, servicemen have been killed, uh, in this attack, this this crisis appears to be have, have been averted, but the confrontation continues.
Lieutenant General, the academics are deciding whether we should stay in Iraq. Many are saying we should stay in Iraq. Stephen Cook of the Council on Foreign Relations heated in an essay in the last 24 hours that we should leave and leave now. Is that any way to run a policy? Does the president this morning have to state that we will stay in Baghdad, stay in Fallujah, stay in Iraq? Well, I mean, I think what, what we ought to remember is that the, the purpose for the U.S.-led coalition's presence in Iraq is to counter ISIS, Daesh. That's its, its goal. It's to counter Daesh, counter ISIS. And ISIS is not defeated. It, it continues to operate as an insurgent group in Iraq and in Syria. So if, if we want to effectively counter them, then there has to be that presence on the ground, that coalition presence. And the backbone of that presence is the United States. Without it, the, the rest of the coalition would find it very difficult to operate. So absent the Americans, Iraq is going to need some help. And who could they get that help from? Well, they'll get it from Iran, and Iran has been helping them throughout the course of the counter-Dash campaign. Uh, but they might also now have no other choice but to go to Russia. And it would be, seem to me a fairly curious strategic response to cede Iraq to Iran and Russia if that's the way America chose to do it.